is more of an art than a science and, and some people do this with electronic machines uh, nowadays and you know I have a thing against stuff made in China and I think some of those are made in USA I'm not real sure but I know they're pretty expensive and, and I don't have any use for them I, I think they're they make you lazy and somebody will figure out how to to uh, fool a you know a minimum wage worker using one of those machines and then if you're you know in that situation you are going to lose your shirt but uh, that's just kind of a, a paranoia <clears throat> you know if you choose to do this with a machine uh, I guess you you want to buy the best machine and 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 there you go I mean you're you're protecting a lot of money but I've got this chain here and it's a little chain I bought a long time back and I tell you I've all, I'm all, almost sold it uh, half a dozen times and I never really paid that much attention to it, but although I knew it was 18 karat gold, because it has this marker link, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it has a marker link there, and it's marked, uh, you know, 0.750, and I think it's also marked with a hallmark at the top, and then has a, uh, I think it also says 18K, which is kind of a, a red flag to tell you the truth because you know you should most things are just marked one direction I mean you're gonna see decimals you're gonna see carriage or probably not too often gonna see both this is marked at 18 and so we'll put it right there beside the 18 marking and it actually kind of blended in with the 18 marking, but that's not going to matter. Uh, you can clearly see where I scratched this. And inspecting this piece, and the clasp itself is actually marked gold filled, so you know, I know what the clasp is. The problem is that I have bought this piece sometime in the past for solid 18 karat, so we are going to do a rub. Uh, I think I'll do it maybe around I'll do it on the 10 carat or beside the 10k and just see what the difference is on the chain it's kind of hard to rub a small link chain and this is a very nice piece of jewelry I like I say I've was actually it was on its way to eBay and, and the ball here actually does look like 18k and that's why I did not even notice the marking on the clasp uh, I bought this a long time ago and there's not a chance that I can remember who I bought it from so now I've got my my scratchings on there and normally you would just use maybe one pin and uh, whatever it was you were trying to figure out you know if you had a old worn ring and your customer was telling you well you know I know it's 14k um, and then you were wanting to know you know is this piece 10k that you're about to buy and, and that would tell you uh, so anyhow, I used the 14, the 18 carat on this, and we have the scratching here of the marker link. Uh, obviously, is 18k. We have the 18 carat pin is uh, looking good also, and then we have uh, the 14 carat is washed out, and the 10 carat is washed out, and it appears to me like that chain. Uh, at first glance I thought we had a, a good test there but now it is washed out however the 18 karat is also very much washed out at this point because I've basically not taken my results fast enough I was making the video so you know that's kind of an unclear reading and and you then you got to make sure you keep your 14 karat uh, acid out of your 18 karat acid because they will commingle and increase in potency 
So looking across, see the, the 18 karat when using the 14 karat acid, you see that the 18 karat is obviously a different gold. And the chain is obviously a different gold. It's a better grade of gold. You can see that the 10 is obviously lower than the 14. It's not completely washed out, but it will be in a second. The 14 is darkened, uh, which that's why you need the comparison because you know you will see that sometime. Uh, I think that uh, some gold testers probably use that as a, uh, a ploy sometimes. Uh, and what I'm saying is depending on what you what kind of acid you use you could you could make this test very deceptive to someone if you wanted to use it for bad basically uh, but to use it for your own uh, protection or your knowledge you really have to develop an art about doing this what uh, acids you're going to use. When you get a match, the gold will uh, match. No matter which acid you use, you will get a match. You'll either get an all washout or you'll get a, you know, all toned. Uh, you may get an all brightness. Uh, and on the 18 karat, that was the case with the 14 karat acid. The 18 karat gold remained nice and crispy and bright. For a very long time, much longer than the 14 karat gold would on the stone. So you see, you had a match at both ends where the chain is obviously 18 karat. And the only thing that is not according to Hoyle on this piece is this, this clasp, and they must have lost it. But uh, the marker link is good, and the chain is good, and I'm, I'm pretty surprised because I was have not previously tested this and, and I was ready to take a little bath on it but that's what we found out and that's how you do uh, purity testing on a stone uh, it's uh, an art not a science uh, and it does rely a little bit on your honesty whether that be with yourself or with your customer but uh, you can make that test come out a lot of different ways by using a lot of different acids. Uh, had I used 10 carat, I would have probably been able to still tell the three different carats of gold that were on the stone by how they looked. Um, had I had even more varieties of gold on there, I would be able to tell the difference between, say, dental gold and 22 carat gold. Uh, as long as you have a comparison, and it doesn't have to be pins, you know, you could carry around a, a really standard quality 14 karat wedding band that you knew for sure this was a 40 year old wedding band, nicely worn and, uh, and totally right. And you could use that for your comparison mark. So you wouldn't necessarily have to buy a set of these pins, and I, I don't know if I mentioned that was like $18 probably. I don't know, that's six years old or something. So it, you can use and use and use and use these. I, I don't know how long they last, but a very, very long time. I've, I've literally probably tested hundreds of pieces uh, with that uh, set right there. Uh, you really don't have to leave a very big mark. Those marks were way larger than I would normally use uh, to do my own comparisons and, and like I said I probably get these out uh, a good five times a week. But if I didn't have them I could always use a test piece out of the lot uh, that I was buying and, and you know a lot of times they do that I see something in there I recognize and, and I know that's good and I want to test something that's in the same batch with it I might uh, pull out four or five items and, and look for a difference on all five of them uh, you know, I wasn't even going to test the other four pieces, but by doing that, I was able to uh, kill two birds with one stone. That's all I got for you, and goodbye, and hope that was helpful.